So the other night I was out with some friends and, uh, you know, I hadn't seen them for a while, but one of my friends just was constantly looking at her phone, like checking her status update or something. We haven't seen each other for a while and we're trying to catch up. So are you here for me or, or what's the deal? I don't get that. I'm an Android person through and through, and I'm not afraid to say that I judge people who have iPhones. Don't they want their freedom? I don't like my phone telling me what I can and cannot do. I'm just not that kind of person. Looking for roommates on Craigslist is a real drag. There are so many people out there, and housing is in such high demand here in DC. We get so many emails, but you know we can't invite everyone to come look at the place. So my roommates and I decided to go online and uh, vet people on Facebook. So when I was working in the restaurant, uh, it was very important that the people don't stay sitting and eating too long because we were uh, the salary was tip based. So uh, I have two blogs that I use. Uh, one is the one that's more publicly available. The second blog, however, I use to kind of um, for an outlet that so that other people don't know about it necessarily. When I'm on the metro and the person next to me is having a really loud personal conversation, I just pretend not to listen. I can hear every word, but I act like it's not happening. I wish they would be more respectful of the rest of us that have to listen to it. Any of these situations sound familiar? They happen pretty often, which means we're likely to overlook them. There's always that kid in class on Facebook. Sometimes people break up with significant others over the phone. Happens all the time. What else is there to discuss? Actually, the stories you just heard can be analyzed under the lens of sociology. Sociology, as its name suggests, is the study of society. Some sociologists are more interested in society on a larger scale. Think big numbers, population, immigration, cities. That's macro sociology. Others are more interested in social activity on a small scale. This is micro sociology. Micro sociology is concerned with individuals and everyday interactions such as the ones you heard at the beginning of this video. One of the most famous contributors to micro sociological theory is Irving Goffman. Goffman specialized in a concept that could be categorized under a school of thought called symbolic interactionism. Goffman's perspective is called dramaturgy. Dramaturgy uses metaphorical terminology from theater to describe what happens when two or more people interact with each other. Therefore, you might hear words such as front stage, backstage, performer, and breaking character when Goffman's works are discussed. Before we get into specifics, let's break down Goffman's argument. Dramaturgy is more complicated than just saying all the world's a stage. Goffman believed that humans are information seekers. He made the assumption that when two people come into contact with each other, they're looking for signals that will give information about the person they're interacting with. But she or he is also concerned with the signals within her or his own performance. There are many different factors involved in any given performance we may be enacting. This includes setting, clothes, time of day, how many people are around, and who these people are. So, our two people here are having a conversation. Figure A and Figure B. They are both simultaneously interpreting all of the signals that the other displays, but they are also trying to manage the signals that they are giving to the other, whether intentional or not. Goffman breaks this down into what is given and what is given off. So a given could be, for example, if figure A dressed like a really environmentally conscious person. Let's throw a yoga mat and some sandals in there. But when the conversation is over, figure A gets into a gas-guzzling Hummer and drives away. In this case, the given off contradicted the given performance. Given off doesn't have to manifest through an object like the Hummer, either. Let's say figure A asks figure B out to lunch. Figure B says, eh, I'm not hungry, maybe some other time. But then figure B's stomach makes a noise. Performance disrupted. Irving Goffman was born in 1922 in Alberta, Canada. His parents were Ukrainian Jews who later moved the family to Manitoba where his father ran a tailoring business. After leaving the University of Manitoba to pursue a career in the film industry, young Irving developed an interest in sociology and restarted his studies at the University of Toronto then moved on to graduate studies at the University of Chicago in 1949. It was during his time in Chicago that Goffman began writing what he would later compile into his most famous book, The Presentation of Self in Everyday Life. 